Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Spokane City Council briefing session for May 8th. Uh, we are first going to have a roll call. Council President Biggs. Here. Council Member Bingle. Here. Council Member Cathcart. Present. Council Member Kinnear. Present. Council Member Stratton. Here. Council Member Wilkerson. Present. Council Member Zappone. Here. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. All right. So. We've been shifting to this for a while, but just to call it out, we're going to look do um, current agenda changes for tonight first. That way, uh, the assist, legislative assistants can get the sign-ins ready, uh, and then we'll move to the advanced agenda. So the first one, and maybe the only one, is um, consent item number eight, fleet services. Uh, Department Director Rick Giddings and I, we were just trying to get something a little more specific, which we did. We reached an agreement on that and circulated that around. And I'm looking, uh, well, in a moment I'll look for it. Basically, we wanted to not get caught in the middle of canceling orders before we know and making sure that whatever orders for the hybrids we can't get fulfilled, then we can order the internal combustion engines for that. But not trying, we, we're not allowed to overlap. We couldn't just order the new combustion ones, it was complicated. So we've come up with that language that would essentially just amend the OPR from last year uh, to be a little more specific. And we circulated that around today. And Rick signed off on that. And I'm looking for a motion to add the language or to substitute the language. So moved. Second. Councilman Kafka. Yeah, I guess I'm just wondering, does this, does this expedite the process um, to, to the best the best that we can, I guess, is my question. It, well, until we, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can really answer that. We don't really know how to expedite the process, but it doesn't cancel the order that's there, but it gives authority to fleet to whatever we don't get to order to replace the ones that they canceled with the internal combustion. Okay. There was some talk that maybe it was speculative if we canceled full order and substituted, maybe that would increase our chances, but there wasn't anything we asked from Bud Clary, like, do you have some specifics that? And it seemed to me, from what I saw, it was kind of speculation. Okay. And we're supposed to hear any day now what... And you can live with this? With the changes? Yeah, looking for that. I, I just want to make... Yeah? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're at the point now, the cancellations are, are or the, uh, the official announcement that the vehicles won't be able to be built is, is supposed to happen any time now. So okay. at this point, we really don't, we're not losing very much. Um, and so all along, we wanted the highest number of hybrids if we could get them. And so this is, we kind of think, is a, is a pretty good compromise to be able to get more specificity and, and still be able to act when this, when this announcement comes. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rick. Any other questions, comments on this? All those in favor of the motion to substitute, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Any abstentions? All right. That is substituted. And despite me circulating a potential uh, amendment to um, the public use ordinance, after talking with city legal, it seems like it's best to wait till the legislature acts and then go accordingly instead of doing that. So I'm not asking anyone to do that. And I don't know if there's any other changes on the agenda. Did you have any, Council Member Stratton? Number 22, sorry. Sorry, 22. Needs to be oh. added. Let's have a briefing on 22, which is the interlocal on the broadband development. Mr. Finch, this is joining in. Well, go ahead and tell us about what it is. All right. Uh, good afternoon, Council. I appreciate the time. So we briefed, I think, this first in committee, I want to say it's about three weeks ago, uh, you know, before the, the one-week break. Uh, this is uh, to join and have uh, an, an elected official on the, the Broadlink PDA board, the Broadlink PDA, uh, which was just created uh, a couple of months back in, in principle, but they have not sat yet because they're waiting for all of us to join, um, is uh, uh, really meant to harness 
uh, and develop uh, a better broadband action plan for uh, the entire county. Uh, and, and so this is part of the both the federal and the state initiative uh, and grant funding sources that they have uh, that are basically bringing you know what will be you know really hundreds of millions of dollars you know into uh, the area for broadband. So we're kind of a critical partnership that, of that as, as we have a lot of you know uh, that uh, infrastructure in place in the city. Uh, and, and so it will be good to be kind of on that, which, which really gives us a pathway uh, to both help the region as well as be able to get in, in additional investment dollars into that, in, into that broadband. One of the challenges we have right now is, is that it's really as much as we can do for operations, uh, plus what, it, what we're able to self-fund through either you know, um, uh, conduit leasing or, or, or other things that we do today. Um, and this will really be able to step up the game for us. So it really kind of, it's, it's, it's really in its formative stage. That way, once we kind of get, uh, you know, signed on to the, the PDA, which is there's no cost, no obligations. I, I, I kind of went through a process with the county to write uh, a, a couple page memorandum of all the assets and capabilities the city has that, that are leverage points, because I wanted to make sure that was part of the official record. Uh, there's no commitments made to it. It really is going to be once we get that, that uh, elected, uh, seated, uh, that the board will go through and set goals and decide how to do it. In, in parallel, there's, there's operational planning that's going on to submit as part of the overall uh, broadband action team planning for the county. Uh, that I, I know several of you are, have, have been participating in. So it's really formative. There's no, no, uh, uh, no downside scene, uh, uh, very good potential and opportunity scene, and it would be really up to that board to then determine how to, how to best you know, develop the relationship for the city. So certainly from a staff recommendation, both from uh, Steve uh, in the economic development side as well as uh, uh, mine, uh, is to, to uh, get your approval for this. Questions? Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, just uh, really important. Uh, glad this is coming together. But I just want to just be clear the position would be full voting participatory rights, not just a liaison or a. Correct. Okay. Uh, as I understand it, it's a full voting member. And we, and we were trying to get, I didn't realize we were going to have the briefing piece. Uh, uh, so uh, we can. All, uh, I wasn't able to get Arian on in time, I don't think. So, uh, but yes, okay. uh, as I uh, look at the ILA and the reading, it would be a full voting member. Great. Thank you. Um, how many members are on the board, roughly? I don't have it in front of me. I want to say it's about eight. Do you remember, Steve? It's as long as the... Uh, hey, come on up, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have the exact number, although we have that information somewhere. We, I, I, too, didn't know this was going to be on today. Um, but uh, I think it depends on how many of the other... There's another city position for a smaller city in the area, which may or may not come on, so I think it will be adjusted accordingly, but I thought it was somewhere between six and eight total. Yeah. And who, how is it the selection process for the, first of all, for the city of Spokane, what's the selection process for that person? Is that spelled out? Or um, not spelled out in their documentation. I think that would be something that yeah. city council would decide. And then what about the other members? I mean, I'm just trying to get a sense of what the other members yeah. are. So, I, and, and again, I'm doing this from memory, but, you know, I believe when they created the PDA, they put, uh, you know, some positions on uh, a couple from the county, yeah. you know, like uh, their CEO, and I, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah. uh, and, and then, you know, they, um, you know, had one for the, the large cities. And, and again, we, we, we've asked for that to be an enduring, you know, membership because of, if we're providing assets, then, then that only makes sense. Um, and then they're still trying to activate, I think, the small city piece of it. So uh, I, I, I believe it's spelled out in the charter uh, that we included as a part of the packet. I'm sorry, I just, you know, and I'll get that to you and I can email it to you. Okay, I think it's in the packet. So it says one, Spokane County Commissioner, Spokane County Chief Executive Officer, Spokane County Public Works Director, and one elected from small cities and one from large cities. Right. So then that would be five. Okay. Councilmember Kinnear. Oh, wait. I, I, lost. I think they're talking. Oh. No, no oh. I have a question. Can pull on that. Okay. Speak into your mic, though. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Um, so how did we decide? So we've been working with <clears throat> City of Spokane and has been working with Spokane County and the broadband action team. 
what's up, Rod? Who are they? And it says led by Arian Schmidt. Yeah. So how did, the, the, how did that get decided? Sure. So for the state of Washington, I'm not sure how it was organized in other states or if this is a common way to do it. But within the state of Washington, um, the uh, what is the the, the broadband state group? Broadband state broadband office came up with a. Uh, organizing method where each county would create a broadband action team mm -hmm. and that broadband action team would then be responsible for putting together the plan for that county working okay. with the city and the jurisdictions within that county and then that plan gets submitted to the state broadband office it gets rolled up into one plan uh, this is just the organizing way that the state decided to do it okay. um, and so that's why we've been working directly with the county quite frankly just to be plain that's where the money is. Like we, we wouldn't be able to access these funds through BEAD and other sources without being a part of the county plan that gets submitted. Okay. And so we've been not only involved in those meetings, but uh, meeting weekly for the last several months with Arianne, with Eric, um, and with our, um, our consultant, Joe Pore, um, who's working on behalf of the city on this. Um, that, that's that's kind of the way that the state of Washington set it up is everything goes through the county so okay. that's part of our reasoning here um, is just practical because we have to go that way but the other is and I'm sorry if I missed Eric saying this before remember we do have the assets we have those we have that conduit we have that active fiber and that can be helpful for not only achieving what the county wants to achieve which is um, more of a focus on rural uh, broadband and fiber, which the current federal funds are more aligned with that r rural focus, but we're able to utilize our existing assets to get them what they need, but also get what we need, which we have plenty of people in this city, as we've talked about, who don't have adequate fiber and broadband now. Right. And there's a way that we can do this if we work smart, like we've been trying to lay out in the plan, is to do both. I was <clears throat> concerned that we really didn't have a voice from the very beginning. It seemed like it was all set up and then we kind of joined along. If they'd already selected somebody to lead and they'd already started the process and then we joined. No, so, no, we, we've yeah. been involved okay. since day one, even before mm -hmm. the, the broadband action team was a, was a thing okay. that we were aware, aware of. That early on, and that I had hired Joe initially okay. um, on, on a contract through our division and he came up with that plan. And then the, the broadband action team may have been being planned at the state level, but it wasn't uh, announced until sometime later. So we've been in this in the beginning, working closely with Ariane and others even before okay. the broadband action team came out. Thank you. Councilmember Cathcart? Yeah, yeah, Steve, Steve's been involved in this a long time. I think Councilwoman Wilkerson and I had a meeting to talk about this, God, almost a year ago, yeah. it seems like now, yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, two questions, one is since the way um, it was read, that it's a large city, smaller city, is the charter gonna be updated to specify that it's a city of Spokane seat, or do you expect it will be changing hands? I don't know if the Valley counts as a major city, but but would yeah. it be changing hands at some time? So we asked that very specific question, and the response was like, we, we understand that. That's why we want the board to get seated so we can we we can get there. But my okay. my perspective is that, that yeah. with you know the 15 million to 20 million dollars worth of assets uh, that we have you know available, and certainly a lot of those are city focused, but it touches all the way out to the urban growth area, um, is that we should have an enduring seat. If you know, I think any asset provider, uh, and, and and certainly that would be the the city of Spokane. So, but I think that would be like one of those first mm -hmm. board actions that we would want to we yeah. want to achieve. Well, and a follow up, I guess, would be uh, what what is the primary focus? or is it gonna be fairly balanced? Is it more rural? Is it more, you know, some of the deficits in the urban areas? Because are, there are some. And so are those the focus? What, what is the main focus? Yeah, I mean, I, I do think it's truly countywide, including the urban portions mm -hmm. of the county, of which were the main focus of that. But I think the initial funding that is being hand, uh, dealt with right now, the plan that's coming forward in June that we're gonna be submitting as a county to the state level is more on the uh, rural focus. Mm -hmm. But like I said before, from the very beginning, we've thought since we do have those assets and the county doesn't, the easiest way that the county, the cheapest, easiest and mm -hmm. quickest way that the county can get fiber out to the rural areas of the county is through our system. From an end point at the north, the south, the east, or mm -hmm. the west, we have either conduit or fiber out to those areas and we can get 
them, we can allow them to achieve what they want to achieve with us um, also getting some funding, we hope, to be able to do um, you know, the good things that need to be done in the city to reach neighborhoods. And then also from an economic development standpoint, since our PDAs are either in or adjacent to um, low income neighborhoods, it would be a way to get there so we have some job creation potential. That's great. Thank you. And at the same time, I, I, I would also want to make sure we're continuing the lobby uh, for the urban underserved, mm -hmm. because that yes. is a realistic problem. And when you match the population piece versus potentially the, the rural under, you know, unserved or underserved, I believe we have, uh, we have a good story to tell in terms of what we need to do on our digital divide. Um, and you know, so I, I think that continues to de need to be championed. You know, these these um, conditions are really coming down from the federal level and the the IAJA, the you know the uh, um, big big grant. Um, so we need to work, I think, with with the very le various legislators at the state and federal level to try to get uh, some more love for the urban side. Okay. And I'll just add, Mike and Councilmember Kat Carr and I were in the very beginning, along with uh, hiring. The supporting hiring the consultant, and we quickly realized that we could leverage the city and the county to get more resources going forward, that the city going alone by itself was not going to give us the outcomes that we were looking for uh, to play in this large pot of money, and the county realized it as well. So really, for us to get the best outcome and the most resources, uh, a partnership was the most natural way to go. Um, and so, yes, a seat, a designated seat will be critical, uh, but I think really this is the only venue we have to access these funds on this side of the state. Certainly at this time, that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. I'm just going to ask Mr. Wright, <clears throat> I've looked through this. I don't see the mechanism for choosing the board members. And I, and I think yeah. uh, largely they've left that to us. But I mean, even any of the board members, like, like let's say who picks the small cities person? Oh, oh, oh. It doesn't say was it the the county ones get to pick who they want and can they pick anyone or can they just I mean it just, I think they were outreaching to other cities including Spokane Valley and I'm not sure where that sits right now whether they if if that city has an interest so, in being involved and I realize that Arian's probably the one to maybe talk about it but maybe between now and six is yeah. she in town she's online yeah. well there we go. Mm -hmm. Arian, uh, where, where in the document does it decide who picks the board members, if it does? Yes, well, good afternoon, uh, Council. Thank you. So um, in the document, the Charter does name the uh, board membership. Three of them are named members that are from the county. The two that we're talking about today are actually appointed by the cities that have interlocal agreements. So last week, the board met for the first time, and there were a number of small cities underneath 50,000 that had completed their interlocal agreement. And during the board meeting, they came to consensus and uh, unanimously agreed to um, have Mayor Terry Cooper of Medical Lake sit on behalf of the small cities. Um, again, as um, I believe uh, Councilmember Wilkerson pointed out, um, right now this will be pretty much the only city above 50,000 will be the city of Spokane. And then as Mr. Finch and Mr. McDonald stated, that would be great conversation for the board. But as far as who represents the city of Spokane, that may be um, an elect from any member of the council or the mayor um, that you would like to represent. Um, at the upcoming board meeting for consideration of confirmation for that seat. Councilmember Bingham. So does that mean that the Spokane Valley is not going to be participating in this? Not necessarily. Um, again, they um, every city has been moving at their own cadence. Um, and so we've been interacting with the city of the Valley they're not quite ready. So again, um, because the city of Spokane will have an approved ILA agreement, they will be occupying that seat. And I think there will be some very valuable discussion um, as far as keeping that a dedicated seat. Um, and then when the Valley decides um, what their decision is as far as onboarding, making um, a, a charter change recommendation at that time um, per the consensus or discussion of the board.
So we would, in essence, have a dedicated seat until Spokane Valley decided to... Right, because we're the only city that would be participating right. until they join. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Other questions? Okay. Well, looking for a motion to suspend the rules for purposes of adjusting the agenda. So moved. Been moved. Mo moved to suspend the rules. Well, she moved. Oh, I I'll did. second. I okay. Just... Any discussion on the motion to suspend the rules? Councilmember Bingle. Specifically for this one item? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Any abstentions? All right. The rules are suspended. Is there a motion to add item 22? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Any abstentions? All right, that's added. I don't see anything else. Um, so, excuse me, did you want to, I know you mentioned it briefly that we were going to go back to our... We're not going back to it, it's just what's already in there. We already, it's already filed. Did you, we have Justin and, Justin Bingham here, did you want to make him available for any questions that anyone might have? Does anyone have questions for Justin Bingham? He might have come here for not. No. He's going, eh. Okay. But he was in the room. He was in the room. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, hearing nothing further, let's move to the uh, advanced agenda. Mr. Piccolo sitting in for Mr. Perkins. Thank you, and good afternoon. On the consent agenda, item number one is the service level agreement with Shrek and Tom Williams from the fire department will brief this item. I'm not um, sure if anybody. So we, we deferred this to this time because the county had, or I, let's say Administrator Perkins had thought the county would have by April voted to add a board member for the city of Spokane, either replacing Administrator Perkins or an ex officio designated by the um, council. And so we put it off, and, but I don't think they've done it yet. But Mr. Smithson, uh, maybe I'm you sorry, have an update. I didn't hear Mr. Piccolo announce. This is the, this the, is the SLA sh for Shrek? Yeah, that we deferred today yes. in hopes that the county would have acted by now, but I'm assuming they haven't acted. Yes, thank you. Uh, we did send a letter to the county asking when they plan to address this issue. We haven't heard anything back from them, so um, we are kind of up in the air. Now, we did have an amendment to the service level agreement that basically sets our current um, pay, pay schedule indefinitely until we get this, this issue sorted out. So we're not under the gun as we were a month and a half ago, two months ago. Yes? Do we have any idea when they're going to respond to... I, mean, I thought they didn't. I thought they were not going to have any meetings in the month of April for various reasons. So I suspect that they're probably going to address the issue soon. I saw some email. I don't re remember it, but that they said they would invite us to come present to them, but they didn't set a date. Right. We did. We received an email from their uh, the county administrator saying that they would address it and that we could come present, uh, but that. We were never given a date or anything. I, I can follow up on that. I was kind of waiting for a formal letter back from them, but we'll wow. follow up on that, especially Mr. Perkins is out until Wednesday, so we'll be able to, to touch base with the county this week later. Um, Councilmember Bingle has a question. Councilmember Bingle. I just want to know who I need to call to make this happen and get it done because <laughs> it just feels like it just keeps dragging along. We're not getting anything. It's just not the way to do business. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I would say Administrator Scott Simmons, except when I talked to him, he said, well, no commissioner brought it to me. So uh, either him or your favorite okay. county commissioner all right. who will listen. They're all five my carry, favorite. They're all carry five your water. my favorite. We'll get the one who will carry the water for you. Because <laughs> he said, until I hear from a county commissioner, I'm not going to do anything. Okay. Council Member I, Cuthbert. I will tell you, I did connect with Commissioner Kearns following our last discussion on this point. And at, at that point in time, I don't know when that was, they, they had not had any, any discussions about it whatsoever. So it was yeah. fairly news to them, actually. Okay. Well, I'm looking for a motion to uh, defer. Moved. 
until <laughs> June, June 12th. Can we say indefinitely? No. 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 Okay, June Please 12th. don't say indefinitely. Yeah. June 12th. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Always. Okay. Councilmember Bingle, commentary. Yeah. Is there, what's the, what are the impacts of a deferral? What's, what's happening? Where are we at? Currently, we really don't have any impact. We want to get this done sooner rather than later. But again, we're kind of in a holding pattern, waiting, waiting to hear back from the county. So I will follow up on that as well as, as maybe Mr. Perkins. But yes, if you have any, any input with any of the county commissioners, it sounds like Mr. Simmons is waiting to hear from a county commissioner. Okay. Can we schedule a time with Johnny? I'll go down in person with him. We just got to, I, yeah. I don't know. Um, the threat, just to clarify, the threat of us having to pay higher fees is not currently an issue anymore. Okay. That's what you were saying. So it's, okay. uh, it's more of just making it permanent. <laughs> Councilmember Wilkerson. If you still no, I was going to say, has the urgency been removed because we are paying them? We got a pay schedule, right? Yes, yep. we're paying. The urgency is not there because we're not going to be charged the administrative fee. That's, yeah. that's what the problem was, is that until we signed the service level agreement, it was advised to us that we we're going to end up paying a, an admin fee. Like 50000 a month or something yes. like that. Yes. So that is off the table. So the penalty is off the table okay. for us. But Councilmember Kinnear. None of us should be surprised. This has been going on for seven plus years. So we've been asking for information. We don't get it. They need to vote. They don't do it. So I'm getting so cynical. This is just a continua continuance of the same behavior. If it finally happens, it's going to be miraculous. I do have some good news, though. We now have two positions on their board. So Mr. Perkins, I believe, attended his first meeting along with Chief Schaefer. So we now have seats at the table. And uh, we are, we're able to get more information and have input that we didn't have before. So that is one silver lining to where we are at currently. And are we going to get that information and input? Has that been? Yeah, that, the question is, are we yeah. going to get that information? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the question. <laughs> Councilmember Cathcart. With, with a PRR, can we request that information, like discussions, minutes, et cetera, from their meetings? Oh, it's, it's posted online. They, it's, all, it's all open. Okay. Yes, they have, they have yes, all their minutes and... Their agendas are, are posted online. Okay. Crap. Except their executive sessions when they're talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> those, those aren't done, so. I've heard about those. All right. Any other discussions? Motion before us is to defer item one to June 12th. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any, no? Any excuse opposed me? No, yeah. No? Any abstentions? All right. That is deferred. All right. Back to you, Mr. Piccolo. Thank you. The next three items are purchases for the waste energy facility involving belt conveyors, fabric filter bags, and generator services. And David Payne will brief these three items. Good afternoon, Council President, Council Members. The three items today are, are as uh, Mr. Piccolo referred to. The first one is fabrication of 213 feet foot conveyors and 145 foot conveyor to be provided by Thomas Conveyor of Burleson, Texas, the only bidder that responded for a total of $148,471.25, including tax and delivery. This is to be used in our ash bypass system. The second is for additional funds for our, our fabric filter bags purchase for the upcoming years. We're going to need an, an additional $60,000 due to pricing increases to cover that. We, the fabric filter bags are what take out the particulates and help us maintain our emissions controls. So the additional is $60,000 plus tax will be added to the value blanket. And the final is our um, renewal for our sole source contract with Siemens Energy for services for our turbine, over, turbine at the waste energy plant. The, typically it's $100,000. We've raised it to $350,000 because we want to complete our turbine controls upgrade that did not get done last fall. Any questions? Thank you. The next three items will be briefed by Adam Russell and they involve purchase of a John Deere wheeler wheel loader, a diesel sprinter van and purchasing parts through Napa Auto Parts. Good afternoon, Council. 
the wastewater department would like to purchase a John Deere 544P wheel loader from Pape Machinery using source well contract 032119 JDC for the amount of $234,734.24. This piece of equipment will replace a unit in that's reached its second, the end of its economical life. <clears throat> Fleet Services would like to purchase one diesel sprinter van from Guy of Liberty Lake for police property using the Washington State DES contract. Total cost including sales tax is estimated to be $69,000 and that unit's replacing one that's uh, reached its end of, end of life as well. Lastly, um, Contract with NAP IBS. Uh, as you may remember, we briefed this, uh, this vendor managed inventory model for our parts department at a study session in February and a committee in March. We chose to slow progress until now to keep in step with 270 to address questions and concerns they had regarding the impacts. Uh, through positive and productive discussions, we're in concurrence with 270 and have gained their approval to move forward on this contract. So just as a reminder, a vendor managed inventory contract with SNAP IBS will allow us to secure our parts room as necessary to safeguard inventory, reduce shrinkage, and increase efficiency, uh, reclass vacant parts positions into non-admin productive uh, technicians, uh, giving us a better path of progress progression for those employees. It'll also increase overall shop productivity and reduce vehicle downtime and provide a significant cost savings with minimal impact to our employees. Can I answer any questions? Just quickly, the two positions, what did you say about the two positions? Yeah, so we have, um, we will have actually three vacant parts positions that will be reclassed from admin positions to uh, productive technicians. And so. will they be uh, union represented? Are those union yeah, represented Yeah, they're, they're 270 okay. positions. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Good job on Thank this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. Number eight is an amendment and extension to the air local agreement with Fairchild Air Force Base for disposal of solid waste. And Chris Everett will brief this item. Good afternoon, council members. Today I'm seeking approval to exercise a five year renewal with the Fairchild Air Force Base um, for air local agreement uh, disposal of solid waste. Uh, this was originally a five one year option. Uh, renewals, but both parties are mutually agreeable to one five-year extension. Um, all other terms and conditions remain the same, including annual price increases. Uh, this agreement is expected to generate $850,000 in revenue over the life of the um, extension. Can I answer any questions? Yes, Mr. Bingle. Does anything else in the contract change, or is it just the... It's just the, instead of five one-year renewals, it's one five-year renewal. All right, thank you. And item nine, I had a request um, from parking to remove that from the agenda. We don't, they don't need to get a council vote on it, it turns out. Okay. So is there a motion to remove item nine? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions? All right, item nine is removed. Okay. Number 10 is a master interagency agreement with the Department of Natural Resources and Lance Dahl. We'll brief this item. Thank you, Council. We're looking at a master uh, interagency agreement with the DNR. This will be a one leg of our stool with uh, wildland fuel mitigation. We'll use these crews uh, for fuel mitigation work. The reason to go to a master contract is uh, or agreement is so other departments can use their services. Some of the other services the uh, crews provide. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown here. Restoration and planning's maintenance uh, activities associated with planting native trees and shrubs, installation of weed fabric and tree protectors, site preparation, including vegetation and weed removal. Planning maintenance, such as watering, flowering, mowing. So a lot of civil culture work, uh, maintenance of existing uh, buildings and fencings, uh, fire fuel reduction work, pre-commercial tree thinning, tree falling, limbing, bucking, that type of work. So we felt that uh, having a master contract uh, with a limit set at 300000 annually will allow other departments, if they want to use this uh, crew, to do that type of work. So is, are those all in conjunction with DNR? Yes. So everything you just said there would have been... Yeah, this crew can do all that type but of work. just for DNR? Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah. And then uh, down the road, we'll be coming with a couple other master contracts uh, doing other work for uh, fuel mitigations. Thank Thanks. you. Any other questions? Thanks. The next three items, 11, 12, and 13, will be briefed by Dan Buller. They involve contract amendment with Budinger Associates for Geotech Engineering. Supplemental agreement with Parametrics, and then item that was discussed last week, the Garland Avenue Pathway Shaw Middle School Project. Good afternoon. Item 11, proposed contract increase for the agreement with Budinger for on-call geotechnical services for an additional $400,000. This is one of a number of on-call contracts we have for outside engineering services. Fund expend, funds expended under this contract are reimbursed by various city public works projects. Item 12 is the amendment with parametrics engineering for additional design associated with the Garland Pathway Project for an additional $15,000. This was necessitated due to added scope to the project. And finally, item 13 also pertains to Garland Pathway where we are waiting for DOT approval to award, um, which will be at least a week in coming. They are short staffed right now, so we request to defer that until next week and possibly two weeks from now. All right, let's see. Before you go, don't leave yet. Let's get that nailed down. So is it the 22nd we're meeting? 29th is Memorial Day, right? Right. Okay, so so you'd like it deferred to the 22nd? Is I'm it two possible? Weeks. Two weeks. 22nd is two Is weeks. it possible to do it to the 15th if yeah. in case DOT no, is? whatever you want. Okay, to the okay. 15th, okay. and then I, may, I might have to ask the same thing okay, if DOT doesn't do it. All right, so is there a motion to defer item 13 to May 15th? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Any abstentions? All right, it's deferred to the 15th. Number 14 is a placeholder for pending claims and payments. Number 15 is a placeholder for council meeting minutes. There are no SBOs or emergency ordinances. The one resolution, one correction there is it, the resolution number is 2023-0037, not 36. There was a typo there. And that relates to declaring safe restraints as a sole source provider. And Jackie McConnell will brief this item. Good afternoon, Council. This is uh, basically, I think, because we didn't get all the uh, correct paperwork back in March having to do a sole source resolution. Um, so if you remember, we did an amazing presentation on the wrap restraint device, which is going very well in terms of being used on the street. So this is just to request um, approval of a sole source resolution um, for purchase of this item. Yes, ma'am. And they are the only company that makes this, or this is the most competitive? No, this particular device, the way it was presented, mm -hmm. just in total, they're the only company that we have found right now that are selling this particular device. Thank you. Thank you. Then the one ordinance, 36383, relating to Amendments to the SMC regarding water, and Catherine Miller, I believe, briefed on this one last week, and she is here remotely, I believe. Thank you, Council. Uh, same same topic as, as last week. This will be the final reading uh, that I'm briefing here. The only thing I would like to point out is we did refile. We found a small error in the sense that there was an old link to the old fee structure, so we have filed... Uh, to erase or remove that link for now and just made a statement that uh, they can find the fees under our water and hydraulic department fee schedule. All right, any questions? All right, thanks, Catherine. So there are no substitute that one or is that already substituted? It needs to be substituted. It needs to be substituted. All right. You have a motion to substitute? Yeah, so okay. move. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, any opposed, no. Extensions, all right, it's substituted. And do you have that substituted version, Ms. Fister? Yes. Okay, great. 
All right, that's the end, right? That concludes the right. uh, consent agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the May 15th consent agenda as adjusted? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Any abstentions? All right, agenda's there. We have no executive session. Look at this. If you have time to actually have dinner, go home and see your family. Uh, we'll see everyone back at 6 p.m. We're adjourned. <laughs>